Meet Claire. She's a bit of an oddball. A dreamer. You need to go to Paris. And a romantic. Excuse me, you dropped this receipt from uh, Babysitting Paris? Oh my god, Claire, you love him. But in her dream city of Paris, nothing goes as planned. Whether she's battling bureaucrats. Qui? Pourquoi? No, madame. Nannying for the Parisian family from hell. I'm Nadege St. Pierre. This is my mother, Katia. Are you depressed, Claire? Elodie and Angélique. <laughs> or falling in love. Je vais nous inscrire au festival. Avec moi. Avec moi. Twice. Do you have a boyfriend? Claire's stint in Paris is filled with faux pas. Mademoiselle. Yes, you, the puppet person. We will let our children run around and scream. <laughs> and just a bit of magic. Life is far too short, and true passion is far too rare. So you'll be Patricia for me? What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani. I have right here on the line a very special guest. She's an incredibly talented actress, the star of the hit rom-com, critically acclaimed Goodbye Patricia. You just saw the trailer. Currently <laughs> has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes from critics and the audience. And on top of that, they're just racking up the awards in the festival circuit. We are talking to the lead actress, Lizzie Keho. Lizzie, thank you so much for your time. How's everything going? Oh my gosh, thank you for that incredible introduction. It's going well. It's going well. It's been such a fun journey to go on this. And like you said, like I we we never knew that everything like this would happen. So we're really excited. H happy to give you the introduction. I, I love the film, as I told you off the air. I am a sucker for a good rom-com. This is one that kind of <laughs> turns the tables a little bit, going from New York to Paris, uh, back to New York. I got to ask you first, how'd you get hooked up with director Nicola Rose in this film? Yeah. So during the pandemic, there weren't many auditions, but this one came to me and I was really intrigued by it because it was an American girl who speaks French fluently, which is a pretty unique kind of combination. And I learned French. I learned French living in France um, during high school. So I I was I uh, submitted my audition tape and uh, it all went from there. And then we went through a bunch of callbacks and they offered me the part in September of 2020. So a long time ago. So you're American, but you're you're fluent in French. You did yes. go to France, study abroad in high school. You so you were uniquely qualified here. Uh, the other thing I think some viewers might not know is that Nicola is a former puppeteer. And the character you played, Claire, is also a puppeteer. So was it kind of a challenge for you to not only, not only do your first feature film, but also kind of manage these puppets and look, you know, act the part? Totally. You know, puppets were very new to me. I had never worked with puppets before. Thankfully, Nicola is actually a very, very, very professional and extremely trained puppeteer. So we had lots of rehearsals where I would, you know... Um, <laughs> go through all of my puppeteering skills for the camera, which is I'm, I have a lot of experience in theater, but puppeteering for the camera is definitely a unique set of skills, but Nicola trained me very well. So I was incredibly grateful for that. You did a fantastic job. And one, and one thing I noticed you. too, that just the, the cast itself, like they just fit like a, like a perfect puzzle and everything. Was yes. that chemistry immediate or did it kind of take time to develop? You know, so that it's funny that you should say that my very good friend, Casey Landman, and I were actually in this film together by coincidence. Casey plays my friend Julia and we were in right before final callbacks. We somehow got in touch about us, us both having these callbacks for this film or actually Casey got the film before I did and she got in touch with me. We found out about me being in final callbacks for the lead role and we were like, oh my gosh. We're we're auditioning for the same for the same movie, so that was uh, an incredible coincidence. And you know, the very first time I met Toma, we really hit it off. So we really did know that um, we were going to have chemistry. And he's just such a wonderful person, and he's an unbelievable. He's the easiest actor in the world to to 
to work with because he's just so open and so um, present that it was he's just a fun person to be around and everyone else was just a, an absolute ball and we had we had a lot of fun on set which uh which which made it all much better that that's great and does he actually have any real life uh, figure skating skills because he looked good in that film he really did you know he actually doesn't there was another there was um a professional skater that that the film we kind of we tried to use some movie magic to make it look like Toma was was skating perfectly but it was not actually him obviously when the movie's out there and everything you've already done the best you can you can only hope that it's received well but yeah. are you even surprised at how well received it is i mean i've i've been seeing like any negative criticism of this film which is rare for really any kind of media i know nicola and i say if you ever really get down on the world just go to the goodbye Petrushka reviews on amazon prime they are so like it's incredibly incredible how heartfelt um, some of these reviews are and some of the the feedback that I've gotten. It's incredible how people really, really connect to the story and connect to the energy in the story. You know, it's so it's so um, it, it's such a unique story to have a single character movie that is about a young woman really like messing up her life and then like piecing it all back together. That's I I I. I uh, I think that that is such a unique um, story, and um, I'm really glad that we told it. And I think people really want to see it, so I, I look forward to more films like this. Yeah, no, it was, it was definitely unique, and I, and I really like the fact that there were so many different themes. Right, it's kind of like a coming mm -hmm. of age story, but it's also you know a girl who's falling in love, and also making a major life change, going to Paris, <laughs> and you know, having to humble herself, and 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 everything else. So, were there any challenges as far as being able to project kind of all those you know? different themes into one character totally totally you know i think that being um the like i had never been the lead this was my first lead in a feature film and so i felt a lot of of pressure going into it and i felt a lot of pressure during the during the filming but i think that like i said everybody on set was so wonderful and we were having so much fun that it really, um, it made it so organic so that everyone kind of would coalesce on the energy of every scene. So absolutely, there were challenges of like rising to the occasion and like not letting anybody down. But um, with everybody, with everybody on set, we just had such a good time that, that I think we made it happen. Hey, you, you definitely did. And, and by the way, I want to remind everybody they can currently stream Goodbye Patricia right now on Tubi, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and YouTube, or you know, Absolutely. essentially a film festival near you. I feel like it's been playing everywhere. So <laughs> that's pretty freaking awesome. Now, before we get to more of the film, I got to ask you, Lizzie, because you mentioned this is your first feature film, did a heck of a job. But before that, the journey had to start somewhere. So how did your journey in performing arts start? Oh my gosh, thank you for that wonderful question. So my um, mother thought that I was a very expressive child and she signed me up for Miss Maureen's Summer Stars Theater Camp. And so the journey all began when I was about five or six years old uh, in, in Tampa, Florida, uh, going to, to theater camp. And I would just go all, all summer for the whole summer, every single week. So um and then I just, I never left theater camp. I kind of, kind of joke to people. And when you were kind of working your way up and everything and realized like, man, I'd, I'd really like to make this an actual career. Yeah. Were, were your friends and family like, hey, ha have a backup plan or, or did they fully support you and, and think like, all right, if you're going to do this, get an agent, you know, get headshots, do all, do all that jazz. Yeah, absolutely. That's, a, that's, a, thank you for that question. I've had, I have the most incredible family and they support me 100%. And with that, I I have a lot of different teachers who also completely support me 100% through the ups and downs and all of the, all of the wonderful and strange things that happen on in this, in this career, as you know, that, uh, that has really been such a blessing. And I, I would not be able to do it if those people were not there for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and one person was there for you, of course, cast you as Nicola Rose, who's not just the director of this great film, but also a, a casting director as well. Certified casting director. Yes. When, yeah. When, when you two linked up and everything, like how cool was it to be able to, to work with her? And what did you learn from her? I mean, a lot of people think seeing all this critical acclaim, she's been in the business for a while, but she was telling me about seven years, which is a lot of time, but really not that much time. And 
you two really just seemed to, to click so well. So what was the biggest lesson you learned from working under Nicola? Oh my gosh, that's such a great question. You know, Nicola is so, um, she is so um, driven and she, but, but driven, but not, um, never sacrifices any heart in that. And I think that that was, it was such a lesson to me that you can really um, work as hard as she does and, um, and have that much drive and that much tenacity without being kind of um, cruel or some things that like mm-hmm. people get frustrated, people, get, all of the understandable emotions that come up when you're making a movie like this, but she's, she's so understanding and she's so um, patient and she's so, uh, she's so thoughtful. So I, I think that, that watching and working with someone like that was so uh, inspiring. And that's great. So it really seems like she kind of set the tone, right? So even though it's your oh, first definitely. feature, there's understandable nerves, maybe some anxiety and everything. It, it seems like between the the great actors that you had to work with and her that everything kind of, you know, once the light came on, it just was business as usual. Definitely, definitely. And we also had so many people on set that were making, uh, just going through Herculean tasks to make everything go smoothly. We had a, a COVID compliance officer, um, her name was Molly O'Brien, who just, who took on amazing, amazing feats of of nature to to make us all look wonderful and everything go smoothly. And Tierney, who's the uh, producer of the film, just I don't know how these people did it. They really moved mountains so that we could all just be creative and in the moment. Awesome. And I'm assuming this probably won't be the last time you work with Nicola, right? I hope not. I mean, Nicola is a a truly, truly a force of nature. I hope she has so many films to come and, and lots of, I know she has lots of magic and lots of beautiful stories to give to the world. So we'll see. (laughs) We shall see. And if people want to watch Goodbye Petrushka again, you could check it out on Amazon Prime Video, Tubi, Google Play, and YouTube. Now, before we let you go, Lizzie, we always like to ask our guests some kind of random and rapid fire questions just to get to know them better. Are you ready? I am ready. Favorite late night snack or cheat meal? Um, Ice cream. What flavor? Cookie dough. All right. Favorite spot in Tampa. If I'm visiting Tampa for the first time, What's a, a spot you tell me to hit up? Totally. So there's this little inlet on Davis Island that is very magical, and it is a great place to um, make some wishes come true. All right. Favorite spot in New York City? Favorite spot in New York City? Um, um, probably the Promenade in Brooklyn Heights. All-time favorite actors and filmmakers? All-time favorite actors. Um. I love Mark Rylance. I love Mark Rylance. I just, I, I can't help but love Mark Rylance. Um, I love, I was just watching Denzel Washington and I just think Denzel Washington is unbelievable. He's the person that's coming to my mind. Um, favorite filmmakers. Besides Nicola. Besides Nicola. That's a great one. Um, besides Nicola. Uh, I really think Sofia Coppola is really interesting. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go with her. She's great. I, I love Lost in Translation. One of my all-time I know, favorite she's, films. It's incredible. Oh. Awesome. What's your most awkward moment in the filming of Goodbye Patricia? Is oh there any is, is there anything that was wacky that happened that makes for a good story now? Um, definitely. So many things. Um, the one that's coming to my mind was when I just um laughed with Nicola about this weekend. Um, so one scene when I was filming it, we had like we had been getting up at 5 a.m. It was 5 a.m. when we shot it. And I was it was so hot outside and I was like sweating and they couldn't keep the makeup on me. And it has turned into one of my favorite scenes of the film because I think that both of us were so present and so alive at that moment um, that that now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so glad all that happened because it was such good acting. <laughs> Was it hard for you to keep a straight face uh, in your scenes with uh, Casey, who plays Julia? Oh, my God. Yes. Especially especially when she was doing the scene um, where uh, we were doing the growling and she has like the, the PowerPoint. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I had to get a lots of giggles out. Who's less self-aware, <laughs> Rafael or Julia? Oh, my God. Um, You know, I actually think Julia might be less self-aware because I don't I think Rafael... I think Rafael kind of knows like the effectiveness of his tactics. I don't know if he knows like the consequences of his tactics, but he knows how fe- effective they are. 
Yeah, and I, and we just want we just want to shout out the actress too who play these great characters because I know they kind of play like aloof, not self aware. But from what I understand, really nice people in real life. Such oh my gosh, the best, such nice people. I don't think you can be like a mean character. This is my personal theory. Like I don't think you can be, play a mean character if you're actually like a mean person. Like mm-hmm. I think the best people play the best mean characters. I don't know. For any young actors watching or listening to this, uh, what advice would you give them up to this point? Find who you are and make yourself so so happy. And make yourself very fulfilled. That's what I would say. It's awesome. And we get you on another high note. Why should people watch Goodbye Petrushka? Uh, People should watch Goodbye Petrushka because I think that it brings a a heartfelt message to to the people who watch it. And I think that we all could use some more heartfelt energy in our lives. Very well said. Concise. To the point. You should definitely check it out. To be... Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, and Google Play. Lizzie, before we let you go, where can we find you online and where can we find you next? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am on Instagram online at Lizzie Kehoe on Instagram and on IMDb. Just my name, as as they know, as they do. And up to next, I have a couple of development projects that I am writing myself. And I will be doing a concert in New Jersey called Side by Night. Hey, hang, hang on. You said concert. So are you also a singer? Or a I am musician? also a singer. In this sing- in what? this concert, I will not be singing. I will be narrating, but I do also sing. So you're also a singer too. What? Yes, I am also a singer. Wow. Yes. What kind of what kind of singing? You know, I I sing a lot of musical theater. That is my 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 personal my personal voice. Are you a singer? I am not a singer, unfortunately. Not yet. <laughs> oh, that's great. Maybe you could teach me one day, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll sign for your classes and everything. But absolutely, no, that's, please do. <laughs> that's fantastic, though. Wow. Okay, so I, I guess moving forward, you, you mentioned your writing. You, you you've done theater work. You, you've done singing. You just starred in your first feature film as the lead actress. I, I, I I'm sure you'd like to do all these different things in your showbiz career. But what do you enjoy the most? Oh my gosh, you know, right now I'm really, really enjoying writing but acting is like my first love it's the thing that I I will always always um it, it, I feel like I can't do anything else unless I'm acting do you know what I mean like yeah. it's the thing that really grounds me in the world yeah and then I would imagine it helps you too as a writer because you kind of know both sides of the spectrum exactly you kind of know how things move on stage and on film and it, it I completely agree with you love that look at you dropping all these facts and you know, I'll, I'll ask us anyway, because I was going to, I always ask this at the end of every interview, but you've already dropped some kind of cool random facts about yourself. Bonus question. Is there anything else you wish I asked you in this interview? I don't think so. Okay. Absolutely. But I thought the, your questions were incredible. I, I feel like I, I shared everything I'd like to share. Thank you so much, Fred. No, I, hey, Lizzie, I, absolutely. It was an absolute pleasure. Of course, you can check her out again. Goodbye, Patricia. Now streaming on Tubi, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, and Google Play. Thanks so much. Thank you.